Good morning. I can see there's just two of you there so far. Um, we should have about 20 people joining us this morning. Um, if you go to the bottom of your screen, there's a little icon for chat. You can open your chat icon and you can select to send messages to just me or to the panelists and all attendees. Um, please feel free to send me a message saying hi and that you can hear me, hear me properly. So we're just going to wait a couple more minutes for other people to join us. Hi, Manus. Good morning. Happy to have your coffee. I'm hoping the fact that we have a password now to allow people in because of Zoom security problems that it's not stopping people from getting in. I have sent everyone the password. Hi, Michelle. Good morning. Good morning, Ravinda. We do have a couple more minutes. It didn't ask me for a password this morning. Oh, good. Okay, that's good to know. It's probably fine. We're not going to be talking about anything secretive. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we're meant to be having about 23 people signed up. I know there's four of you here so far. Um, so we'll just wait a couple more minutes and then I'll introduce myself. Michelle, can you hear me? Hi, Nancy. If you go to the bottom of your screen, there's a little icon. Um, with a little speech bubble that's called chat and in the bottom of that if you click on that you can choose to send messages to just me the panelists or to everyone panelists and attendees Okay, well, it is 10 o'clock, so um, I will start with introductions so that we're not running behind because we have a lot of content to get through today. Okay. I'm just going to share my screen with you now so you can see slides. Let me just have a look here because I can't see the chat. Okay, okay we have a few people here now, there's seven of us. Hi everyone, my name is Jessie Reed. Um, we do have about 23 people signed up for this webinar this morning, so uh, maybe they're still grabbing their coffee, but I will start introducing myself. Um, hopefully you can all hear me. As I was saying to the first people that popped up, down the bottom of your screen, there's a little speech bubble um, for the chat um, icon. And if you click on that, you'll be able to say hi, ask me some questions. Um, down the bottom, you'll be able to select whether it goes just to me, the panelists, or to the panelists and all attendees. Um, so please say hi, let me know that you can hear me properly, give me a thumbs up. Okay, hopefully you can all see my slides. Somebody want to comment and say you can see my slides? I can see your slides, Jesse. See it? Yes, I can see. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Ravinda. 
nice to know people are there. I hope you're all doing okay. Um, probably working from home like I am. Um, so it's nice to have everyone here to chat. Um, please feel free to ask questions in the chat as we go along. I will pause intermittently to, uh, um, to answer questions. Um, we've got a lot of content to get through, so I'll try to get to them as I can. And at the end as well, we can we can have a bit of a chat. Or what, okay, so um, but please feel free to use that chat feature um, and let me know. All right. My name is Jessie Reed. I am a digital marketing professional. Um, I've been in digital marketing, strategic planning and content creation for almost a decade now. I've worked in the public and private sector with small and large businesses. I'm currently employed with the city of St. Catharines uh, in Ontario. We know that this webinar was aimed at small businesses in Niagara, but anyone can join in, so you could be joining me from anywhere in the world. Um, yes, I work with the City of St. Catharines Economic Development Team on a project called Digital Main Street. Digital Main Street is um, an initiative funded by the province of Ontario for small businesses to help get them online. Um, and this is something that really couldn't have come at a more timely um, moment because everybody's having to get more online now with the COVID crisis and um, people not being able to go out and shop in stores. So um, we're really trying to help people up their, their e-commerce and their digital marketing game so that they can survive throughout this. Um, if you are a small business in Ontario or Niagara, you can go to digitalmainstreet.ca and sign up. Um, it's a great site. It gives you a 10 minute um, little quiz about what you're doing for your business as far as digital marketing goes. And it'll give you some feedback about where you're at and where you could do better. Um, and it'll also put you in touch with myself and my colleague Brittany, who's also working on the initiative. Um, and we will be running more webinars and being able to consult with you one on one on your digital marketing needs. And like I said, it's all funded by the province and the Ontario Business Improvement Area Association. So it's free for small businesses in Ontario. And of course, anyone can take advantage of these free webinars that we're running as well on our Facebook page and Facebook group, Digital Main Street Niagara. So if you go and have a look for that, you'll find more info as well. But I'll have some contact details at the end of the webinar. Um, so let's get started. So we're looking at digital marketing for small businesses, 101 this morning, for people starting out, um, and five strategies that I've used that you would see people all around you using um, and work. So I'm just gonna break those down for you and demystify them a little bit and hopefully get you started. Okay, next slide. Come on, slide. There we go, okay. So, Digital marketing is obviously using digital, web, social media, mobile devices, search engines to reach your consumers. It can be overwhelming for small business owners. Um, I was searching on Google this week. I wanted an infographic that explained digital marketing for you and I came across this. Um, and I thought, well, that's a really cool tool because it's got all these great tools in there that you can use for digital marketing. But at the same time, it's really overwhelming. Um, even for me, <laughs> um, even though I know what all of these are, or probably most of them, um, it, is, it can be overwhelming to know where to start, what's going to help your particular business. So that's what we're going to go through today. And this, this infographic was actually titled Essential Digital Marketing Tools for 2020. Essential. Apparently all of those are essential. So um, we don't want to get lost in that. Uh, okay. So... Probably during the COVID crisis, if you have a physical product, um, you may have been forced to move to e-commerce sales or some kind of um, online sales, even if you're just selling stuff on social media, kind of random. Um, or you may have set up a specific e-commerce site, but then you found, oh, that's not the final step. I have to get my consumers to that site to get them to purchase my products or my services. Same if you have a service. Um, you may have done more face-to-face -face bookings, you know the people, um, phone calls, your network, networking events, but now you need to put yourself out there online and be able to book in those consultations or whatever you're doing. Um, and even just continue to engage your audience and, and grow your audience so that when this 
kind of social distancing thing is over, you can jump straight back in with a loyal audience and have that base there for you ready to go. Um, so this is where digital marketing comes in. Um, and yeah, we're going to look at some strategies. But first, I want you to think about this. Um, and I've talked about this in other webinars that I've run, and so is my colleague, Brittany. Um, you need to think like your customer. So who is your ideal customer? Um, and not just like, well, they're a female and they're in their 30s. You've really got to get down into it. Um, and I've put up that infographic there so you can see things like preferences, aspirations, their social media habits, really important. Um, what factors into their purchasing decisions? Their pain points, which is their challenges. Pain points are challenges that you can help solve for your customer. Their daily routines. Um, what influences are they listening to on social media? So you really need to dig down. If you don't know who your audience is, you need to start there. So um, that is the first step, no matter what strategy you're going to use from what we talk about today or a different strategy. If you don't know who your customer is, you can't find them. <laughs> it's as simple as that. So what we want to look at is really figuring out who that person is and then helping them, not cold selling to them. Um, content is still king and people always say this, content is king, content is king. And some people say, well, no, maybe not. Um, but yes, it is. We live in a content filled world. Um, anyone can go online at any time and look up a question they have in Google and find the answer to it. You making content that is tailored for your audience's needs will grow your audience and grow your trust factor with that audience and then allow you to showcase your products and services so that they want to come and buy from you. So, you need an opportunity to show people your products and services and these five strategies are going to help you do that. But my first tip for these strategies would be don't do them all at once. Pick one strategy to start with and really master it before you move on to anything else. Um, you don't want to be overwhelmed and you just want to get going and do it really well. Okay. So first up. Social media marketing. Uh, I'm going to start here because it is super popular. You're probably already on social media for your business, um, but you probably need to give your efforts some direction. You might be feeling frustrated because you don't have a lot of followers. It's not turning into sales or appointments. Um, it's not fulfilling your business goals. So what we need to do is look at it more as a tool for your business goals rather than trying to be popular, more like vanity metrics. Um, so if you decide to use social media marketing, same as with the strategies, pick one channel and win at it. There's a lot of channels that people say, you should be on this channel, you should be on that channel, everyone's on that channel. It has this many billion users per day that are active. It doesn't mean that your ideal customer is there. It means there's a lot of people on there doing a lot of things. They might not even be looking for your, for your product or your service. So pick one and win in it. Having said that, normally when I'm uh, advising clients, I would say pick two or three and win at one and then automate the other one. So having a Facebook page these days is kind of like having another website. If you don't have a Facebook page, people think it's a bit weird. You go on Facebook and they'll search your business name and they'll go, oh, I don't have a Facebook page, that's a bit weird. Um, but there's ways to automate that. So you might decide, my audience is on Instagram, I want to focus there 100%. Just automate your Facebook feed. Have an optimized profile that has a link to your website. So just think about those things as well, but really pick one social media channel that you're going to focus on and you're really going to win it. Remember, numbers aren't everything. This is what I was saying before. Um, you need to grow a loyal following. So it doesn't matter if you have hundreds of thousands of followers and they don't care about your business. It's not going to help you um, and it doesn't look great. Um, the algorithms that social media run on, they don't 
class that is great content if you're not getting great engagement. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, choose the network where your audience is. I'm going to um, show you an article next where you can find out information about that. Um, but like I said, they're not everywhere. Um, if you have an interior design store selling home decor items, you probably won't be selling them on LinkedIn. You might be, you might fancy have a niche there, but you know, you probably won't be. Um, or Twitter, maybe, you know, Twitter's not a very visual medium, it's quick and it, it comes and goes very quickly. You want something where people are inspired by your content, so you might think, well, Pinterest or Instagram are going to work really well for me. So choosing the network where your audience is and understanding why they're on that specific uh, network. So like I said, for Pinterest, they're there to be inspired. So if you think about why you would be on that channel, that's going to help you understand a little bit about that. So, you know, think, have you ever opened Facebook and thought like, uh, I'm going to open Facebook because I want to buy a pair of yoga pants. I've got my credit card in my hand. I'm ready to go. People aren't checking Facebook with their credit card in their hand. They're liking things. They're sharing things. They're checking in with their friends. They're sharing funny things. Um, so think about the reason that they're there. Pinterest, on the other hand, is a social search engine where people like to be inspired, plan, and learn things. So that might be some content that you could really tap into if you had something, say, in my example of the interior vehicle store. Um, so other ones, LinkedIn allows people to market their skills and network with other professionals. Um, Instagram allows people to share photos and videos. Uh, engage with others, explore. It's a bit of a, a voyeur tool, like, oh, what are they up to? Um, can I see inside their life? Um, so that's another way that you might be able to connect with your audience, is showing a little bit of that lifestyle thing. This is the article I was talking about. If you don't know which social media channel your audience is hanging out on, this blog post is a great place to start. I really like this one. Um, I'm going to give you all a copy of these slides at the end, so um, you'll be able to click on that link and go and have a look. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of data in there about who's on these social networks, and um, yeah, go and have a look. <laughs> be handy. Okay. There are more important things than getting thousands of followers. So use your social media as a marketing tool and sales funnel, not as a standalone in building your business. Use it in conjunction with your website, your blog, your mailing list, your e-commerce site, or whatever your goal is. If your goal is to sell your product, make sure you have clear call to action to send them to your e-commerce site. And work towards something meaningful rather than vanity metrics like followers, um, something that will actually help your business. <coughs> Watching your followers' um, numbers grow can be like watching grass grow, I know. Uh, it can be frustrating. And the social media algorithms, I, I touched on this earlier, they actually prefer accounts that have a lot of engagement rather than a lot of followers. So the algorithm it is the way that your posts show up in other people's feeds. Um, so they want to show good content to their, um, to their subscribers. So Instagram wants to show great content to the people that are on there. They're looking for that great content that really resonates with, with you. So when you have really great engaging content and you have a lot of comments and shares and likes and people are direct messaging, messaging you as a result, then the algorithm will love that content and they will share it with more people. If you have 10,000 followers and you have a couple of likes on a post and no, no, um, no comments, no shares, it's going to think that's a bit dodgy and probably not share you a lot. But, you know, if you're on the lower end of followers and you have a great, engagement rate, um, that's going to be really good for you. So instead of thinking of followers, use social media to engage with your audience and create great content for them. So here's a little social media strategy outline for you to work through. <clears throat> Number one, have a plan not to grow your following, but think about your business goals. Do you want to get traffic to your website? Do you want to build a mailing list? Do you want to sell products? Um, let these things guide you. You need to identify your target audience and create that personalized content for that person. If you know who your audience is, then you can create content that is bespoke just for them. And when they come to your account, they will love it and they'll comment and they'll be really engaged. 
Engage with your target market daily. This is one technique that um, a lot of social media marketing people use to um, really get those engagement rates up. Um, so this is a good one for you to know. Um, one way you can do this is um, spend five minutes a day engaging with your target audience. So I'm gonna give you a little example here. I'm gonna go out. Instagram doesn't work great on um, desktop. It's more a mobile tool, um, but hopefully you can all see that. I'm on Instagram. I'm looking at a local vineyard called Ravine Vineyard. They have a lot of followers. They have a really engaging account. If I was a retail store manager at a local winery and I wanted to build my engagement, I wanted to find my audience, I could see that Ravine have a similar audience to me. Um, and they're very engaged. I would go to their latest posts and I would look at the people that are commenting and I would go check it out and I would like and comment their lovely posts that I like. I would spend five minutes a day doing that. You're engaging with your target audience. What will happen then is they will come over to your account and because you're creating that great content that is just for them, they will see that they love it and they will follow you and they will like it and they will comment and you're building that. So if you just do that for five minutes, minutes a day, set a timer, I'm going to do my engagement, you will see that your followers build but also the right followers, the engaged audience. Another way you can do that is um, through a bit of hashtag research. So if you had, had to think about what hashtag described your ideal audience, um, perhaps if I was this winery manager in Niagara, I would say, okay, um, wine lover. They probably would describe themselves as a wine lover. I would go to that hashtag and I would look at the most recent ones. And I could go through and see what's relevant to me. And I could like their posts and I could comment and engage with them. And it's the same thing. They would come over and see that I have great content that's similar and they would like and engage with me. So spend five minutes a day doing that, um, and that's really going to help um, your engagement level and your following. You know, not that we're focusing on that. Um, encourage meaningful daily activity. Oh, 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 oh. oh I went too far. So encourage meaningful daily activity. Um, by giving them a clear call to action. So what do you want them to do? You've thought about what your business goals are and you know who your audience is. So do you want them to click on your website at the link in bio? Do you want them to direct message you an inquiry? Um, ask them. Ask them to go to the link in bio. Send me a direct message. Sign up for our list at link in bio. Email me. Give me a call. Really um, encourage them to make those meaningful activities and make it clear. And all of this doesn't mean that you won't build a following. You absolutely will see your follower numbers go up, but um, you'll be less frustrated and you'll have a more engaged audience. Okay. Next is blogging. Is there any questions so far? Because um, I'm going through this quite quick. I'm just looking at the time. We have a lot of content to get through. And uh, yeah, it's 25 past the hour already. Any questions? Is everybody good? Somebody give me a thumbs up or a yep. All good. Great, thank you. Good to know. So for those that, oh good, we've got 18 people here now. I wasn't checking in. But for those of you that aren't aware, there is a little icon down the bottom of your Zoom screen or up the top, as well sometimes. Um, a little speech bubble, that would be the chat feature. And at the bottom of that, you can either comment to me um, or you can comment to everybody. Um, you can ask questions, but I will be stopping occasionally for questions and I'll try and get through all of them. So, on we go. Blogging. Helping rather than cold selling. And this again is um, similar to the social media thing, um, but more in depth content. Remember who your audience is and solve their problems, answer their questions. It's the same with your social media. Keep SEO in mind. SEO is search engine optimization. It basically means making it easier for people to find you in Google. 
Um, so if you're using those right keywords in your content, people will be able to find you more easily. That's one step in SEO. There's a whole bunch of stuff that SEO experts will tell you that you have to do um, for your website, but when we're writing a blog post, keeping SEO in mind means doing some keyword research and um, using those topics to make a blog post. So be intentional about what you post. Um, if you're sharing the blog, what you did that day, or an idea you had, or whatever, it's more like a diary rather than a blog. And it might be great for people that are already engaged with you and your family and your friends and those really loyal followers, but it's not necessarily going to help you grow your audience. So you want to build web traffic, leads, sales. You've got to be really intentional about what you post. So do a little keyword research in Google and it'll help you discover what your audience is looking for. You can see here in my Google search, I've just done a little screenshot, why is my computer so slow? So say um, you were a computer parts company and you wanted to do a blog post um, that featured some of your products in it that would help speed up people's computers. Um, I would think mm, that's something that my audience would probably search for. So I would go into Google and I'd type it in and down the bottom of my screen, I would see related searches. So this is giving me an idea of what, pe what else people are searching for on this topic. Um, it's a great way to find content for blogs, very easy. Um, why is Windows 10 so slow? Why is my Mac slow? Why is my laptop so slow? There's a whole bunch of topics there right for you. Um, for blog posts. And within that blog content, you can tell them about your great products and services and how you can help them, right? You're, you're giving them answers and you're solving a problem. So, putting yourself in the customer's shoes, what do you think they're searching for? Look at it in Google and find it. What I just talked about, the computer parts example. Um, answer the question, give product solutions, clear call to actions of where they can purchase your product or book an appointment with you. There's some other tools here, um, and I'll send these with um, the content that I give you after this. I'll give you a recording of the webinar and the slides, um, my contact information, and I'll also give you some links to some of these helpful tools. Um, apart from just going to the, your Google search to think about what people might be searching for, um, you can also sign up for a Google AdWords account. You don't have to make an ad and pay for it, but you can use their keyword planner. So here's my account here, and you can see there's some really um, helpful things here. So if I was looking for topics to blog on, um, on the left here, discover new keywords, I could look at keywords related to my product, so I could type in computer parts, and it would give me a whole list of keywords around my computer parts products um, that people are searching for. Um, and then I could go over to this other little tool on the right and I could get the volume um, and a forecast of volume of how many people are searching for those particular keywords. So very valuable um, signing up for a Google AdWords uh, ad account just to use the tools um, without paying for any ads. Keywords Everywhere is a plugin you can use. Um, it's free and you can see down the bottom here you can install it for Chrome or Firefox. I have it on my screen. If I go to a website, say, just using the same one before because that's what I was thinking of. Um, it is going to give me, and I click on that little keyword icon up the top there, keywords everywhere. It is going to analyze that page. It's going to import keywords. It's going to tell me all the keywords that Ravine are using um, in their content to attract their audience. So that's a really valuable tool as well for um, doing a little bit of competitor research um, in your niche. Um, another one is ask the answer the public. Not ask the public. Answer the public. So this is a great tool as well, answerthepublic.com. If I put in here computer parts. So if I just put in computers, okay, and I search for it, they are going to give me a whole lot of lists. So I just put in what my product is basically. Say I have a computer parts store. I put in, you know, what my product is. It is going to give me a graphic of all the questions 
on the web that people are asking about computers. These are all topics for my blog post. So they're, and they're divided by how, what, are, uh, will, so what computers can't do, how computers help the environment, how computers work. Uh, it's an interesting one. When computers were made, which computers are the best, right? Computer review, that's a good one. Um, can computers be recycled? Interesting. So there's lots of topics there that I could use for blog posts, so much so. Right, so answer the public, I'll give you a link to that at the end. Tips for writing a blog post with search engine optimization in mind. Use keywords and phrases in your heading. So once you have that keyword or phrase that you're using in your writing, you want to make sure that it is in your heading of your blog post. Break up the text in your blog post. People don't read online the same way that they do a print piece of paper. They scan websites rather than sit down and read the whole thing generally. So you want nice bold subheads um, and you want to use your keywords in those where possible. Use keywords in a natural way throughout the piece. When I say that, um, people used to do keyword stuffing and that used to work for Google where you just put a bunch of your keywords in the post everywhere and Google would think, oh, that's really related to this topic. Uh, it doesn't do that anymore. It will um, shoot you down for keyword stuffing. So you want to use the keyword throughout your post, but you just want to use it in a natural way where it comes up. Make it a minimum of 300 words in length. The optimum length of blog posts in 2020 um, is around 1,700 words. So I think they're actually getting longer every year, um, but that's, you know, you, you just want it to, to be great content really, um, but don't make it any shorter than 300 words because then it won't be significant enough for Google to care about. Fill out your meta descriptions and title tags with keywords. If you have a blog, if you use something like WordPress, there will be plugins that you can use to fill out meta descriptions and title tags. Fill those out. Those things pop up in Google. Uh, when people are searching for you, and they also tell Google um, that your content is related to what people are searching for. Optimize image titles and alt text with keywords. So when you upload an image to break up a blog post, it's great to have images and blog posts um, that help tell your story. When you type in the little file name of that image, instead of just calling it image1.jpg, call it your keyword. Um, Mac computer part. JPEG. Um, that helps with your SEO. Google reads all these things. Uh, and also, it will give you um, some options when you upload your photo to any kind of blog post, blogspot, WordPress, or whatever. You'll see alt text, titles, things like that. Fill those out with your keyword. Use internal links. Link to other parts of your site. This is where you give clear call to action. Click here to purchase this computer part, click here to book an appointment with us over Zoom. <laughs> um, contact us here, find out more about this here. Having internal links in a blog post tells Google that the important content is in your site. Use external links sparingly. Don't do a lot of linking out to other websites who are telling Google that the important information is somewhere else. Um, use them occasionally, but not a lot. Like I said, there's a lot of information, but I am going to give you these slides at the end so you can go through all of these tips for yourself as you're writing your blog post. Number three is video content. Okay, I'm just going to go to my chat feature here. I haven't been paying attention. Yes, Lisa asked, double checking, you'll be sharing these slides with us. Yes, Lisa, I will be sharing the slides with you at the end. I know it's a lot of content. Um, and I'll also be sharing the recording um, and some more resources that you can use, okay? Does anybody have any questions about blogs so far? Any quick questions? We'll have a bit of a Q&A at the end. Any bloggers out there? Nope. <laughs> I will say that blogs are a lot of work. Um, People that want to do them, uh, I think, romanticise the idea about having a great blog. 
um, but you really have to decide whether it's going to be suitable for your business because uh, as somebody that writes content professionally, it does take a lot of time and energy and effort to put something great together. Um, and if you spend three days working on one blog post and it's not helping your sales or your bookings, then maybe social media marketing, microblogging. Ravinda, I use Uber Suggest for keyword search. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, okay. Uber Suggest. All right, I'm going to check that out. Thank you, Ravinda. I really like um, other um, suggestions about what tools people use as well. Like I showed you that wheel at the start, there are so many digital marketing tools you can use. So um, obviously the ones I'm giving you work for me, but it's definitely not the, uh, from Neil Patel, yes, he is great and he has heaps of great suggestions. If you um, are a blogger or even a social media marketer following Neil Patel and listening to his stuff, it's fantastic. Thank you, Ravinda. Um, okay, so yes, blogs, fantastic. Um, if they're done right, a lot of work but you know, perhaps it will work for you. Okay, let's get back to it. <clears throat> Video content. Did you know that YouTube is the second biggest search engine in the world? So when you think about search engines, you think about Google and Yahoo and Bing and whatever else, but it's basically Google. Um, YouTube is second to Google. People are searching millions of things every day. They're looking for answers to their questions. Um, it's a great place to solve problems for people like we talked about with blog posts and your social media. Um, there is an opportunity here for people when we're talking about search engine optimization. Optimizing for YouTube, you can also do. Um, and not a lot of people do it. Comparatively to Google search, which is so competitive, I would say YouTube is less competitive because people don't, they will upload great video content and they'll use some keywords in the title, but there's a lot more you can do as far as optimizing your content on YouTube, which means it can make it quite easy for you to show up and get engagement. And I'm gonna go through that. Okay, so. Focusing on YouTube. Like I said, second largest um, in the world. Video carousels on Google doubled in 2017. So if you've ever searched a question on Google, um, like here, this little screenshot I've got, I put in how to train my dog to sit. I have a new puppy, so I've been Googling that a lot. <laughs> um, but say you owned um, a pet training um, company or even like a, um, a doggy boutique. This would be your ideal audience, people that have just bought a dog. So um, giving them great content on this and then telling them about your product and where you're located um, could be a fantastic way to go. And you can see those videos that come up in Google as well, in the video carousels are really engaging and they get a lot of clicks. Um, so that's, that's a fantastic place to show up. The same principle applies to blogging. You need to solve problems and answer questions for your ideal customers. You still need to know who that person is. How to create a professional looking video without the expense. Some quick tips. Okay, you might want to look over this later if you're going to do it again. Um, you can use your iPhone. However, you want to make sure it looks really steady and you can frame yourself nicely. So you might want to invest in a tripod and you can get these little attachments for your iPhone. So you can really frame yourself up nicely rather than doing a bit of this, although maybe that'll work for you if it's some kind of cool baby video, I don't know. Um, but yes, that will give you a more professional look using a tripod and an attachment. Write down the points you want to talk about. Obviously you can edit afterwards, but you want to stay on track. You want to make it nice and succinct um, and get through what you've got to say. Find natural light. Make sure it's nice and bright. If you're filming from your basement, it's probably not going to look very professional. Might look a bit creepy. <laughs> um, use a clean background, nice white background. Don't distract. Uh, don't have the kids running around in the background and the laundry over there. Um, find just something nice, clean, and simple. Invest in a lapel microphone. So audio is a really big factor in making something look and sound professional. You can get um, lapel mics pretty inexpensively on like Amazon for around 50 bucks and they just pop onto your shirt and they plug straight into your iPhone with a big long cord. Um, 
if you want to have that better sound quality, that might be something that you want to invest in. Um, there's lots of great apps out there to use. So you can search in the app store um, for free ones or paid ones, things that will easily edit your video in your phone and make it quick rather than putting it onto your computer and using computer editing software, which if you wanted to take it to the next level, you could do. But bloggers and social media video people are using these things all the time and they're great. You can edit your video, crop it, speed it up, slow it down, um, flip it around, add music that make sure it doesn't have any commercial licensing on it because it won't get shown anywhere. Um, add commercial free music. You can add your logo and your URL to the end. You can pop in images that explain what you're talking about. Um, the example I have there is called InShot. It's a free app that I use for video editing, but there's a bunch of them if you go to the App Store and search. Optimize your YouTube videos. This is what I was talking about earlier. A lot of people don't do all these things um, and are missing out on the opportunity of showing up in YouTube. Rename your video file using a target keyword. This is the same as what I said with pictures in your blog post. Don't call it video.jpg. Call it training your puppy. Training dash your dash puppy dot jpg or dot mp4. Um, so use those keywords in your file. Insert your keyword naturally in the video title, so make sure it's in the title, of course, and in the description. So optimize the video description. That just means the same thing, making it easier to be found. Um, you can break it up with little headings if you want, but make sure that keyword is in there. Tag your video with popular keywords that relate to your topic, so you can tag. Um, categorize your video. Make sure it's in a category that's going to work for it. Upload a custom thumbnail image um, with a keyword in the file. Use an SRT file to add subtitles and closed captions. That's a great way to help you. Um, you can look up tutorials on how to do that in Google and you can actually do it with the notepad feature on your computer. And it's not too difficult, it's a little bit time consuming, but um, if you really want to go for it with optimizing, you might want to add subtitles and closed captions. Um, add cards and end screens to increase YouTube channel viewership. So you'll see the option to do that in YouTube. Hi, Carl. I just saw you raise your hand. Um, I'm going to go back to um, chat feature in a minute and talk about that. So, yes, you will see um, the cards and end screens feature when you're uploading a video um, there. Okay. Email marketing. We're up to email marketing. What time is it? Oh, my goodness, we've got 15 minutes left. Okay. I'm just going to pop back in and um, see if you've got any questions. My chat page has disappeared. There it is. Okay, any questions about YouTube? Nope, we're all good, Jesse. Keep going. <laughs> we're going to talk about email marketing next. Like I said, um, we will talk a little bit at the end if we have time. Um, I know there's a lot of content here, but also I'd love to hear at the end um, which, if any of these strategies you would like to hear more about, more in depth um, about in further ones. Hi, do you have experience with influencer marketing? Could you please share something? I do have experience with influencer marketing. That's just, sorry. <laughs> okay, it's going to all panelists, but it's not going to everybody. So some of you didn't see that. But somebody just asked if I have experience with influencer marketing. Um, and could I please share something? Um, influencer marketing is a great way to up your engagement with your target market. If you find an influencer that is really valuable with your audience, you know your audience well enough, um, they can be expensive if they have a huge engaged following, but some of them actually do um, shares for products. So you might find that you can um, send them something and they will give you a little shout out in their stories. Um, direct message them on Instagram and see how um, see if they get back to you in a timely manner and how professional they are. Um, I wouldn't suggest for small businesses to go paying them thousands of dollars, um, but see what they say to you if you're interested in having them engage. Um, it is really valuable for um, your following and your engagement, depending on who you get. I would say that um, be clear about what you want from them um, and they will be clear about what they want from you. 
So, um, you know, I am going to send you, I had somebody once send me, <laughs> so when I was, when one of my accounts, I had somebody send me a box of bread once because um, they were a bread company and they wanted me to um, give them a shout out. And they were very clear and I was very clear. So um, they said, if you like our product, could you give us two stories and one Instagram post? And I said, yes, if I like your product. <laughs> but um, yeah, anyway, it's a good it's a good way to go. Um, and perhaps that is, you know, if we do a whole um, webinar on social media marketing, I would talk about influencer marketing in there. Does that answer your question a little bit? Yes, no? We better move on because we're running out of time. Yes, thanks a lot. No problem. <laughs> okay, happy to help. Okay, um, let's see. I'm going to find my present button. Email marketing, the long play. Um, people do say that you have to do email marketing, it's very important. Yes, it is important to build up your email list. Um, you know, like they say, you don't own your Instagram following or your Facebook following. Facebook and Instagram own that. And if they crash tomorrow, it would all be gone. Um, you get to keep your email list. Um, but you need traffic to get visitors to your site. And you need a form to turn those videos as visitors into subscribers. So it's a long play strategy, and but it is a great way to build a connection with your audience and to keep them coming back. Okay. So my tips for email marketing would be add a form to your website from day one. So do that immediately. Um, it just depends how aggressive you want to be with it. If it's something that you're really going to focus on, maybe you want a big pop-up that comes up as soon as they go to your site and it gives them an incentive to sign up. So, you know, get 15% off your first order if you sign up for our emailing list. If, you're, if it's something that you're just going to have building in the background where you work on your other strategies, then perhaps you just want a small pop-up that comes up after a minute or two or uh, you want it to be a menu item like, you know, stay in touch or in your footer. So you just have to think about, um, you don't want to annoy your website visitors with a bunch of pop-ups that constantly come up in their face. Um, so what's that perfect balance for you? I think if you are going to have a big aggressive pop-up that comes up in people's face, it's great to offer something. Um, be realistic with your goals. So don't think that it's going to happen overnight. And it would be a strategy that I would say that as it grows, then you can start to think about how you're going to use that list. Okay. That's really um, all I'm going to talk about with email marketing today, but it is something that we could get into in another webinar. Does anybody have any questions about email marketing? Yes, all the rest. <laughs> okay, now, we're on to our final one. Woohoo, we're going to make it. Paid advertising. Just having a look at my notes to make sure I haven't forgotten anything here for you. Okay. Pay per click or PPC advertising. It can get really expensive. Um, I wouldn't want you to think that everyone's doing it and it's working for people, so I should go and do it too. Um, if you do want to do Google PPC advertising, I would say really try and master it. Um, especially your keyword research and what you're bidding for. Um, there is a fantastic site called Grow with Google. I don't know if you all know about this, but it is a free learning space, everything Google, run by Google, um, and you can become a master in Google AdWords in there. Um, so if that is the strategy that you want to focus on and really use, then I would say go and do their courses. Um, I'll just show you here, and obviously you'll have these at the end. This is Grow with Google, and you can see you can do a Google ad certification, um, lots of videos, you can learn about shopping ads, search ads, um, all sorts of stuff. So I would definitely say that 
if you do want to do Google advertising, and spend some time learning. The ABCs of advertising. Audience, we've talked about audience a lot. Budget, okay? Um, you have to think about what channel you're going to use for your paid advertising, and that could depend on your budget. Commerciality, and we're going to talk about all three of these in a second. So audience, don't throw your money into paid advertising on a certain network because you heard someone else had great success with it. It's the same with um, being on social media account because everybody else is on it. It doesn't mean it's going to work for your product or service. Remember, like with every other strategy, you need to have a clear idea of where your audience is and what purpose they're there for. Um, what purpose they're there for is an important thing to think about in this instance. And this um, leads into what's the difference between Google ads and social media advertising. I get this question a lot. What's the difference? Should I do one or the other? Should I do both? Like, if you think about it, it's the reason why people are there. That's what's different about them. So if they're on Google and they're searching for something specific, interior decor stores in St. Catherine, my example again, going back to that, um, then they are ready to buy from an interior decor store. Um, they, yeah, they're gonna find that specific ad that's gonna come up. If they're on Pinterest, which is that social search engine, they're looking for inspiration. They're not looking specifically to buy but it doesn't mean it can't work for your advertising. You can use more of a disrupting advertising method, which would um, inspire them to buy while they weren't even thinking about it. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, if they're in Facebook, you know, again, why are they there? They didn't go on there with their credit card ready to buy. So you just have to think about that. And there's ways to use that and that people use that to great effect. So we're gonna look at that. Budget. Pay per click advertising, which is used on Google and major social media sites, um, works by you bidding on keywords or phrases that are relevant to your product or service. So this means that you pay for every click on your ad by a user. So you're basically buying visits rather than earning them organically. Um, if there's a bunch of competition for a certain keyword, it can get really expensive. Um, so that's something to factor in. <clears throat> Come on, slides. So in this example here of my interior decor store, um, I've gone into the Google Keyword Planner um, and I thought mm, maybe home decor is a good keyword. So I'm going to maybe use that in my advertising. So somebody searching for home decor in St. Catherine, what's it gonna cost me? And then I get a whole bunch of related keywords down here. And you can see that if I decided interior decor down the bottom there was a good keyword for my ad, that if it ran at the top end of bidding, that would cost me almost $8 every time somebody clicked on it. So say you're a small business and you thought, well, I'll just spend the hundred bucks on Google ads and see if it works for me, right? Um, that could be a real waste of hundred bucks if you don't know, um, you don't know whether those people um, are your ideal customer, for starters. Um, if they're just looking for home interior decor, they might be just looking for interior decor ideas. They might not be looking to buy yet. Um, so it might not be specific enough and it's gonna cost you a lot. So for your hundred bucks, you might get 12 people to click on your site um, that may not buy anything. So that's an expensive um, ad. Um, so commerciality. So if you choose, because you know what, um, I'm not gonna do Google, I wanna do social media advertising. Um, you need to find a way to bridge the gap between the intent of the audience on the platform and your advertising. So when I was talking about the reason why they are there, they're on Pinterest because they want to be inspired, they want to get ideas, um, they want to find solutions to their questions. The solution, the bridge between your social media advertising and your sale is again content, okay? 
So I'm going to run an ad on Pinterest about my to increase sales on my interior decor items. Um, I'm going to write a blog post about 10 spring interior design ideas that won't break the budget because I did some Google searching and I found that people are really looking for that. I'm going to run a blog post on my site. I'm going to do a pin about it and that's what I will run as my ad. Within that blog post, I'm going to have a bunch of great links and call to actions to buy my products or services because it's going to help solve those people's problems. I've got some really inexpensive ways that it's really going to brighten up your living room. And that's where they go to your e-commerce. So the content is the bridge between the intent of the audience and your sales. And that's what you have to think about when you're thinking about the commerciality um, of your advertising on social media. Recap, we made it to the recap and it is five minutes to 11. So <clears throat> choose one strategy and win it. Whether it's social media, blogging, videos, email marketing, paid ads, there is more. The five that I talked about at the be all and end all, maybe some of you out there want to do a podcast. I don't know. You know, so there's forums, there's different things, um, but these are five that I have chosen. But whatever you choose, choose one and master it. Define your goals, make sure you know what they are and use those goals in your strategy. Remember them, write them down. Every time you make a piece of content, is it working with my goals? Know who your ideal customer is. Create those audience personas. Really flesh them out. Know what their buying habits are, their pain points. They have a really strong pain point at the moment. They have to be in social distancing. How can you help them out? People need activities and fun and um, they are doing things like baking and activities for their kids. They need to get things to their house, so delivery is a great solution to their pain point. Um, if you have a service, how are you um, solving that problem? Are you um, providing them with Zoom consultations, webinars, um, yoga online? How can you reach them and um, overcome their um, pain points during the COVID crisis, right? That is a big one at the moment. Create content that addresses their needs. Right, simple as that. Um, and just stick with it. it it's, digital marketing is not switch the light on and they're all going to come running. But you do need time to grow your lo loyal audience. Um, but no matter what your strategy is, just stick with it. Um, and that being said, it's not a quick fix, but if you get it right, you will find that audience and start engaging with them quite quickly. Um, I know an example of a small local winery that I've been consulting with. A little bit um, and they were really worried when this crisis happened and they're doing really well um, and it's because of their digital marketing and what changed was they had no strategy or business goals for their Instagram before it was a bit willy-nilly and they just were putting out a vibe about what their running is about um, and then during the crisis they got scared and realized they had to start selling online um, and they came up with a great bunch of fun packages that really solve their customers' um, problems, that cheer them up, um, that help them celebrate, and they deliver it to their door free of charge, and they give them a little discount for buying the package, and they're going crazy on social media, and their actual sales overall are up this year, and their e-commerce sales in particular are up 3,000% um, just in this short period. So just giving their, their focus um, and their content a little bit of a kick um, really helped it go well. So yeah, if you hit that right point, then it, it can really work for you. Okay, thank you and questions. Thank you so much. If you are, like I said at the beginning, if you are a small business um, in Ontario even, or Niagara region in particular, Go to digitalmainstreet.ca and sign up. Um, that is um, the initiative run by the province of Ontario um, and the Ontario Business Improvement Area Association, and that is why I am here. And my colleague Brittany is here um, on occasion giving you free webinars and able to help you with your digital marketing needs. 
Um, there's my email, jreed at Um What strategy would you like to hear more about? Um, are there any that I didn't mention that you would like to know more about? Um, and do you have any questions? Let me just find. Okay, let's get into chat. Thanks for this. Thanks, Kevin. I hope you found it helpful and I will be sending out those slides and resources for you. Oh, thanks, Ravinda. You're amazing too. <laughs> thank you. And kids, thank you. Thanks, Nancy. No questions so far. I thought there'd be a million questions. That was a lot of content, but um, yeah, maybe you guys just don't know where to start. <laughs> um, have a great day. Um, and there, Nancy's saying back to my homework. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. I'm glad that you found the content helpful. Thank you, Michelle. Um, Yes, please email me your questions. Uh, thank you, Carl. <laughs> um, please email me, email me your questions if you don't want to ask them here. Um, I'm happy to answer. Remember, jreed at mccatherine.ca. Um, yeah, we've got one minute left. I'm going to hang out and make sure you don't have any questions. Um, and then I will go and round up your emails and send you out those resources. But um, have a great day, everyone. Yes, Manus, I'm using my computer microphone. Um, I could actually get out my lapel mic, thank you. Okay, when my voice drops, it loses your words. Oh, okay, okay. Um, that could be a connection as well. I have been testing it and I didn't have any problems, but thank you for that feedback and I will um, search out my lapel mic. Can you write down your email? I just missed it. Uh, I'll bring up that slide again for you, Rabinda. Oh, where is it? Screen share. There it is down the bottom. J Reed R E I D at St. Catherine's dot CA. Okay, and it looks like everybody's heading off for the day. If you have a service-based business that could potentially appeal to anyone, how do you know how to find your people and address their needs? Uh, okay, Lisa, um, we could chat over email as well, because this might be a bit of a bigger question. It's a great question. Um, what, what type of service? Okay, just, yeah, I'm, that, that is a big question. Um, I think that within that anyone, there is still people that you would be able to address more than others. Um, I just, I'd need to know the example. Music, but often lessons, but also other things as well. Okay, well, you might have different customer personas for different parts of your business. So if you're offering lessons, um, if you're offering lessons to children, um, you might find that your um, ideal audience is parents with school-aged children um, and you might find an audience on social media by searching out um, some hashtags about music. Um, I think definitely in there, of course, it could appeal to anyone, like a lot of stuff, but um, there is people in their life cycle um, and um, their interests that are going to be more interested in your product and service than others. You want to find those people, but let's email. Are you based in Niagara? Okay, great. Are you signed up for Digital Main Street?
Okay. Um, I'd be happy to give you a one-on-one -on -one consultation um, specifically for your business. Um, if you signed up for the um, province initiative, which is digitalmainstreet.ca, uh, once you sign up there, you'll see um, it'll give you a little digital assessment. Um, and then my colleague Brittany and I will get a notification that you're um, one of our clients and I'll be able to contact you for a one-on-one -on -one consultation. Um, and we can do that over Zoom or whatever you like. But then I can actually have a proper look at your business and your needs and who your audience is and then help you out. You're welcome. <laughs> have a good day.